Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Bad Batch video. As I do with every single episode, today we're going to be talking about the big easter eggs from episode 5. Episode 5 titled Rampage, in my opinion, was absolutely amazing and there are so many easter eggs to talk about, most of which were in Sid's office. So without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. The first thing to talk about is the planet that the Bad Batch go to, and that is Ord Mantell. This planet was of significance in the Clone Wars to the Jedi. It first appeared in Darth Maul's Son of Dathomir, the comic book miniseries which shows Darth Maul on his quest for vengeance against Darth Sidious and Count Dooku. By the time of the Clone Wars, Ord Mantell became home to a large base for the Black Sun Crime Syndicate, which became the focus of a separatist attack launched by Darth Sidious. In the years following the Battle of Geonosis, Ord Mantell was most important as one of the planets that both the Grand Army of the Republic and the Galactic Republic Navy used as a storage facility. They also used it as fleet support base. The reason that our heroes go to Ord Mantell is to find someone called Sid, a Trandoshan female who can give them info on who hired Fennec Shand and why she's after them. As we see in the episode, Sid makes a deal with them. If the Bad Batch are able to rescue a kid called Moochie who was taken by Zygarian slavers, Sid would give them the intel that they're after. Now as we see, Moochie ends up being a Rancor, the same Rancor that Luke Skywalker killed in Return of the Jedi, the same one that belongs to Jabba the Hutt. I was really pleasantly surprised to see Bib Fortuna, the male Twi'lek who is the right hand man of Jabba the Hutt in episode 6. He was even accompanied by Gamorrean guards later in the episode. Now what's really interesting is that if this Rancor is indeed the same one in episode 6, they've retconned both her sex and her name. Moochie was originally a male Rancor called Patissa, but the validity of whether this was canon or not was not certain. But the timeline makes sense for this to eventually become the Rancor we see in episode 6, and her name is Moochie. Now going back to this Trandoshan called Sid, in her office we have quite a few easter eggs. The first one is Boba Fett's prototype helmet on her wall. It's not certain why this appears and why the white version is there, but the show seems to be hinting at Boba Fett showing up really soon, we'll come to that later. Something else that she has is a clone trooper helmet on the wall, and a lot of people seem to think that what you see on the left hand side of the screen is indeed a lightsaber. It has a massive hilt so I'm not too sure. Either way, something about Sid seems really off and you don't really know whether you can trust her or not. We'll just have to wait and see what her motives are if she shows up again. So once again guys, we find ourselves talking about Wrecker, specifically his headache. It's persistent in this episode and it seems to be building up to a big problem down the line, most likely due to his inhibitor chip which caused him to fail against Fennec Shand. In this episode, he takes on the Rancor and really struggles even though the match ends up a tie because the Rancor and Wrecker both exhaust themselves. It's what Tech says that is a startling admission. Wrecker is really losing his touch. In the same vein, something that seemed so small in the last episode that now looks huge in retrospect is the hunger that Wrecker was suffering from last week. This time his headache is back and it's all signalling to something really bad real soon. Now on the subject of the Zygerians, a few weeks ago I accurately predicted that Omega's bow looks like something that the Zygerians would use. I'm very pleased that this was true. So more broadly, if you haven't seen the Clone Wars, let me just talk about the Zygerians a bit. They were a humanoid feline species from Zygeria and they built a powerful empire selling their slaves. As we saw more prominently in seasons 4 and 6 of the Clone Wars, the Jedi went to war with them and outlawed their slavery. The Zygerians attempted to openly revive their slave trade when they allied themselves with the Confederacy of Independent Systems. Other than the Zygerian bow, another thing we see in this episode is the Light Whip. While we can't confirm if this is the same sort of Light Whip we've seen elsewhere in the Star Wars universe, we can talk about them more broadly. They were also known as energy whips or laser whips and they were a rare variation of lightsabers. Light whips generally functioned on the same principles and mechanics as lightsabers, emitting a coherent beam of energy that was used as a weapon. However, rather than the straight meter long blades emitted by standard lightsabers, light whips featured long flexible blades that often exceeded several meters in length. Instead of one large crystal, they contained multiple small ones and the plasma in the blade had no cell barriers to keep it straight. It appeared standard for these weapons to emit only single blades, although light whips with multiple tassels did exist. Lumia, a dark lady of the Sith, owned one. In Lumia's case, she crafted her light whip after an ancient Sith one. Something else we see in Sid's office is Jango Fett's blasters. They're definitely his ones because he distinctly used the West Star 34 blaster pistol. Once the Bad Batch complete the mission of bringing back the Rancor, Sid calls Hunter back into her office to fulfill her side of the deal. She tells him that while she doesn't know who sent Fennec Shand after them, she is working on direct commission. Sid also explains that her sources in the Bounty Hunter Guild tell her that she's a new 
newcomer, but very powerful. I couldn't help but feel that this episode is really teasing the appearance of Boba Fett and or other bounty hunters who are already operating at this time. Young Boba, who's probably aged 14 at this point, was already operating for Crate's Claw. And what I will say is that while the Kaminoans are likely the ones who hired Fennec in the first place, they probably hired a few other bounty hunters as well, and one of these could be Boba. I've made an entire video about this, so I do recommend you go check that one out. So now, my dear Megalorians, I'm going to give you my honest review and overall impressions of this episode. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I really did. Probably more so than last week's one, to be honest. It was more intense and had a lot of callbacks. And in a sense, the rancor and also seeing Bib Fortuna show up really upped the rating for me. So I'm going to give this one about a 7 out of 10. Now, in case you haven't noticed, I've saved talking about Omega for last since her arc in this episode was truly uplifting and deserves its own section. In terms of experience and personal development, Omega has grown so much in the last two episodes and she was a lot more autonomous in this one. She retained her humour and uplifting outlook on life and was delightful as usual. She got her own comm device, was able to take on Zygerians and her bravery was truly awesome. At this point, she truly feels like a fully fledged member of the Bad Batch. There was one really adorable scene where she makes alterations to the toy trooper that she got on Pantora to make it look like a member of Clone Force 99. Innocent moments like these really contribute to her likability and show more of her human side because in a galaxy that's rapidly changing, she was never allowed to be a normal child. And as we saw throughout the series so far, even though we're just five episodes in, she revels at any opportunity to play and be away from conflict. Just look at how her eyes lit up when Sid said they have to go save a kid. So to conclude, while it wasn't my favourite episode of this series, I absolutely loved it. But what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts of today's episode in the comments down below. Did you enjoy today's breakdown? I'm curious to hear all of your thoughts. Before I go guys, I just want to say I'm still having 20% off the entire merch store and the offer expires on the 31st. All you have to do is use code SWM20 at checkout. And I also want to say I have a brand new design, which is Dark Side Meg. It's basically me turned to the dark side and slapped on a t-shirt. So do check that out. I've also revamped my entire Patreon so you can check out the new tiers available in the description. Just follow the link and it'll take you there. Otherwise, I'm Star Wars Meg wishing you all a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a good one.